Let's talk more about this. The increase in deadly tornadoes, devastating wildfires, and severe weather has some scientists blaming the uptick, as Scott said, on global warming. According to a preliminary report by the nonpartisan Rhodium Group, greenhouse gas emissions increased 6.2% in 2021 compared to 2020, which saw a steep drop due to the COVID-19 economic shutdown when millions just stayed home. Joining Scott and myself is Michael Mann, Pennsylvania State University Earth System Science Center director and the author of the new climate war. Good to see you, sir. So for our audience, in layman's terms, what are greenhouse gas emissions? What generates them? Yeah, thanks. It's good to be with you. And that was a great segment by Scott there, really outlining, detailing the impacts, the, the cost that climate change is now bearing. Um, so, you know, our carbon emissions, when we you know, burn fossil fuels, oil, natural gas, coal for energy or transportation um, or other activities that burn carbon, that puts carbon pollution, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. It's a very potent greenhouse gas. It warms up the climate and ultimately we are now on a course where we will warm the planet more than a very dangerous one and a half degrees Celsius or three degrees Fahrenheit, where we'll see far worse impacts of climate change. If we don't bring these carbon emissions down dramatically, we've got to bring them down by about 50% within this decade. And as this latest report shows, right now we're sort of riding along the peak, but we're not coming down it. Yeah, I want to. You said carbon, which is, we do need to bring that down. But the other one that's out there that people really are just starting to talk about is methane, because methane it doesn't last as long in the atmosphere, but it is more damaging in the short run than carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. In fact, methane is responsible, methane emissions, and that's largely from agriculture, but increasingly from natural gas extraction, fracking, uh, what we call fugitive methane emissions. When we drill for natural gas, uh, we actually allow some of that natural gas, which is mostly methane, to leak into the atmosphere. And we've seen a substantial uptick now in methane over the last decade after it had flattened out. That's cause for concern because that's contributed about 25% of the warming that we've seen over the past several decades. It's not most of the warming, but it's enough to push us over some of those dangerous thresholds if we continue on this course. We also saw a surprising 17% uptick in coal generation last year, which was a surprise. You say we need a 50% reduction over the next decade. How in the world do we accomplish that? And if we don't, what are the consequences? Yeah, so, the, you know, the consequences, again, Scott outlined that uh, very clearly in that previous segment. We're seeing the damaging impacts of extreme weather events already. It's costing us almost a trillion dollars, um, almost a trillion dollar cost to the economy from those accumulated extreme weather disasters of the past five years. So there's the urgency. There's why we have to act. Now, there's a little bit of good news here, though. Those recent numbers in carbon emissions sound bad. Much of that is just the rebound as the economy starts up again as there's more transportation, air travel, and driving as we come out of the pandemic. So if you sort of t average out those last two years where we saw a big drop from the pandemic and then we saw it come back this year, we're basically flat. We're, we're riding along the flat part of the curve. So we're not making those emissions worse, but we've got to bring those emissions down to zero and we've got to do so quickly. So there's a lot of work ahead of us um, there are some climate, uh, very important climate provisions in this Build Back Better bill that's still being debated in Congress. We need those climate provisions to pass Congress so that we can do our part here in the United States to bring down our carbon emissions, send an, you know, set an example, send a message to the rest of the world that we need to get serious about this. Well, and that's what you were, I was just going to say. The recent UN Climate Change Conference, there were lots of discussions and lots of pledges. But if the smaller developing countries and even some of the larger countries like China aren't going to be serious about making changes, is it really going to make a difference if the U.S. does? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're seeing a tremendous growth on the part of China, India, and other developing countries. Our carbon emissions in the future are really going to be determined by what they do. And if we don't have our own house in order, if we don't take ownership of the contribution that we've made to this problem thus far, which is the largest contribution of any country, then it's easy for these developing countries to say, hey, you had your turn. Why shouldn't we get ours? Why shouldn't we be able to develop cheap uh, energy infrastructure from fossil fuels. We've got to make it worth their while 
not to do that. We've got to provide them financing to help them leapfrog past the fossil fuel stage so they don't make the same mistake that we made. Of course, there's the backdrop of politics here, and we're out of time. But you, you see, if we go back to a Republican administration, they could pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Yep. And so and so what we go around, the private industry, the private sector has to lead the way here. Michael Mann, Pennsylvania State University Earth System Science Center director and author of the new Climate War. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.